Well, hello and welcome to another Simply Gregster EV review. Today we're actually in the shop. This is where I work. As uh, if you know me, I am actually a mechanic, uh, mostly Porsche and BMW specialists. So today we have the Model 3 standard range that we've been doing some filming with. Um, if you've been following the, the news recently, there's been a lot of talk with Hertz downsizing their EV fleet, Sixth downsizing their Tesla fleet specifically due to high repair costs, appreciation, whole bunch of factors. Uh, this is actually one of those cars. I will probably be the last person to rent this car. We rented this car on Friday. It has 86,000 kilometers on it, roughly 53,000 miles. Um, I picked the highest mileage one they had in the lot. This is a, as I said, a 2022 standard range Model 3 L LFP. Uh, the lot attendant says he was actually, he claimed to, to be the manager. He said, this car will probably be sold very soon. So I figured it would be good to possibly just do a bit of what goes on with these rental cars because there might be some deals to be had. So that's what we're going to check is, is it worth buying an X Hertz rental car, Tesla Model 3? So we're gonna go over a couple issues that I know about the car. I'm not a Tesla specialist, but we do see quite a bit of them at the shop. We're gonna go over a couple issues, as I mentioned, with the car, and is it worth buying? Is the, is the value there, depending where you live, is it worth buying one of these cars for a good deal? Now, what's a good deal? That depends what the prices uh, of, of the cars are selling for. So let's go, let's dive into this a bit. We're going to see if this is a car that would be worth buying. So one of the questions I get asked the most about EVs is the dreaded battery degradation. There's a lot of myths and half-truths surrounding this. I think a lot of information is based off of first-generation Nissan Leafs from 2011, 2012, that era. Um, so there's a couple ways to check degradation in these cars. Now, when you go to Hertz, this car will probably be on a lot and you won't be able to check it. So you're going to have to go with a bit of research what you read online. This car here, I didn't perform the battery health test through service mode because we didn't have enough time but there's quite a good app called Tessie. Tessie will give you a basic idea of what the battery degradation is like. So this car here came with a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. It says the battery health is 97.5%, degradation of 4.3%. So we're just slightly below average in terms of degradation. Now with EVs, the first year is when most degradation does happen. But this being an ex-rental car, it's probably seen a lot of supercharging, a lot of supercharging daily probably, especially if it, it came from the rideshare fleet, uh, Uber, Lyft, that sort of rideshare fleet where it's basically been supercharging two, three, four times a day. I live near a rapid charger site and it's rideshare cars all day long. I know Tesla also says that, that's my phone. I, I know Tesla also says that supercharging doesn't put a lot of strain on the battery, but there have been instances with rideshare cars where the batteries have failed prematurely. Um, the battery on this car is warranted here for eight years, 160,000 kilometers. This car already has 86,000 kilometers on it and it's a two year old car. So I think that's another aspect that you have to consider is do you want to buy a two-year-old car that has the amount of mileage on it as a four or five-year-old car and a car that's been supercharged for its entire life up until this point? Uh, this is an LFP pack. They do recommend once a week going up to 100% to uh, balance out the uh, cells, which is fine. But again, that's your decision to make if you want to buy the X rideshare car that's been rapid charged, supercharged most of its life. So I think that will cover that aspect of the battery health. It's really up to you. It's really up to how the car was driven and, and maintained how, and how it was charged. The other issue with getting an ex-rental car is that they have been obviously driven like a rental car. This car here, as I said, 86,000 kilometers, it's a 2002. There's a lot of swirling in the paint. This panel is actually might've been repainted at some point based on there's a run here. There's scratches. The bumper is absolutely hacked. There's a lot of chips missing out of the bumper. There's a lot of deep marring in the uh, bumper. As I said, the paintwork is not in the greatest shape of this car. Typical Tesla wheels, all four of them are curved. There's a lot of rash 
down here. So it's obviously had a bit of a hard life. Now, if the price of this car reflects that hard life, maybe you could get a deal. But if you're like me and you like your cars looking nice, it would be some work to bring this car back up to what I would say would be normal wear and tear. There's a lot of uh, extreme wear and tear I find on this car, especially in regards of just the paint hazing and swirling. You can tell it's been through a machine wash its entire life. And we already know that the paint work on Teslas isn't great, but this car will need a lot of polishing to bring it back. And it will also need the wheels to be refinished. Now you could always use these wheels as winter wheels and purchase another set of aftermarket wheels and new tires, that's possible as well. But again, that's added cost to the car. The interior on this car is actually fairly in, in good shape. The door cards are quite nice. The seat switches aren't broken. Switch, switch, the uh, switches are something that we see often. They actually break along with this panel that pops off. In terms of the interior, this car is actually quite nice. The, the seats are in good shape. There's no cracks. The bolsters are nice. The steering wheel is in absolutely fantastic shape as well. No, everything in here looks, looks very good. So in this aspect, the interior is nice in this car. I think a good vacuuming and shampooing will solve whatever dirt issues there are. Again, the back is in good condition. The, the seat backs are in very good shape here. A bit dirty for, obviously, it's a rental car, it's a bit dirty, but all of this will clean up nicely on the interior. It's mostly the exterior that's had an extremely difficult life. As you see here too, there's also this trunk lid alignment, but that's kind of a normal issue on these cars. But yeah, the exterior needs quite a bit of work on this car. Again, if the price reflects it, maybe it makes sense to uh, buy it. But from just looking at it from my perspective, having four wheels refinished and a complete detailing on this car, you know, but it's about $200 a wheel here to have it refinished, plus another five to 750 to do the exterior of the car. So you really have to start adding it up. Is it, is it worth it? We've put the car up onto our four post lift. We're, we're gonna have a, a um, look underneath what the car looks like underneath uh, as it's been through the rental fleet. It has higher mileage on it for such a recent car. We're going to have a quick look underneath. There is a knocking sound on this car already. We all know Model 3s, Model Y, they eat through control arms. Uh, this car no longer has a warranty on it from Tesla as well. So those items won't be replaced under warranty. Hertz may replace them if they do any sort of reconditioning. I'm not sure what their level of reconditioning is. However, having dealt with fleets before in the past, the reconditioning is going to be probably very minimal. They might do a light buffing on this car, a quick mechanical inspection, and then put it on the lot to sell. Um, they do have, when you buy a car, an next rental car, they will include, I, th I believe it's 12,000 miles or 16,000 kilometers one year warranty. There are third, word, uh, third party warranty companies that are now offering warranties on these cars for things like the battery packs, the control arms, the, um, the HVAC system, that sort of thing. Uh, I don't recommend really any of them. Uh, they're all a bit different in their own regard. So that's something that you'll have to do if you do buy one of these cars and you do want a third party warranty. A lot of them make you go through one of their brokers to buy it as well. So yeah, let's have a look underneath, see, see what it looks like see if we could find that uh, knocking sound. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a, a control arm or, or, or a sway bar link, so we won't get into too, too much. I'm not buying this car. I'm just giving it a, a quick once over for you guys to know what you're gonna be buying or possibly be buying if you do go that route of the X rental car Model 3. So here we are underneath the car now. We're starting at the front right. I don't see any oil leaking down on that shock. They have a tendency to leak oil from the front shocks on these cars, the front struts, something we change pretty often. These brake pads are about 30, 40% of life left in them. If this was a um, PPI for a customer, I'd have this on the two post lift and take off the wheels and check things properly. But for the purpose of this video, it's just to give you an idea of what the car looks like underneath. Everything looks good over here. No missing chunks of under tray. All the under trays are still attached, no damage dents in the battery pack. There's been a lot of that in the news recently on the EGMP platforms. The cases are getting dented and scrapping the batteries. 
again the back this is just quick visual to make sure everything is still here no everything looks good here the back tires have pretty good tread on them yeah everything seems all right under here we're gonna go under the lift the back discs look good sometimes you see these and they're completely r rusted there's a lot of rash on the bottom of the rocker panels on this car as i said i'm not too sure what level of uh, reconditioning they do when they sell them but i'm pretty sure it's going to be minimal and make sure that the wheels don't fall off these front brake discs have a lot of rust on them as well so those could be cleaned off easily in the brake burnish mode but no everything underneath looks fairly good there's a scratches at the bottom of the bumper like usual and the other side is going to be pretty much the same so in terms of wear and tear for a rental car, I'd say we're pretty normal here. I suggest doing, if you have access to the key card and there's quite a few cars on the lot, and if you do find one that you like, I suggest going into service mode. You click on software, you press the D. It's going to light up, there you go. And you're just gonna type in service. You're gonna click enable. We're going to check the service alerts. There's quite a lot of um, service alerts on this car we have one for louver bl blockage that was probably because we were driving in the uh, snow again another louver blockage uh, sharp current rise high resistance washer fluid low that's not the end of the world it says this one here low voltage supply um that could be an issue with a low voltage battery like i said i'm not too too sure with um uh, how tesla codes work this is something that you could look up quickly as you're in the parking lot just google them and you'll be able to find them but i think it's a good idea to uh, go into a service mode there is here and these are just in customer and you could click all and it will tell you everything that's ever been logged on the uh, car so yeah there's there's quite a lot going on here i don't think there's any huge huge issues but again this could be this could be something as minor as a low voltage battery and we could just we'll go back here to service mode and again you could check your high voltage systems you could check your low volt you your high voltage battery you could check your low voltage systems as well again i said uh, 86,000 almost 87,000 kilometers on this car 54,000 miles uh it's vin 5 so this car was built in uh, fremont and to exit service mode you just click exit service mode hold to exit and that's it you're out of it so that's something again that, that you could check and if you're concerned you could always run um, a, a google search on uh, what those codes mean we gave it a quick once over of what you can check for when you're buying one of these cars you can also enter service mode and check if there's any faults through service mode when you're probably going to be buying one of these off of a uh, rental car used car yard there will be a whole fleet of them there's going to be you could pick your color there's going to be 100 200 cars of the same brand the same makes you're going to have your choice of as i said colors interior options wheels there's going to be so much choice for you there so i think it really comes down to doing your research knowing what you want looking at pricing. Pricing is going to be the big factor with this car. As I said, according to the app, the battery degradation is a bit high. For me, it's not a big deal, especially if you know a bit about EVs, it's not, it's not a horrible deal. Um, what to watch out for in the pricing is, I believe with rental cars, when there's an accident, they don't report it to any reporting agencies such as Carfax or, one, or other larger reporting agencies. So there's that, that the factor, and you don't want to be left holding the ball if you go to sell this car down the line or trade it in and it was in an accident that you didn't know about and then it's a hidden defect it comes back to you then you're fighting with the rental car company and they say well that car we don't have any record of it being in an accident um, here the pricing on these cars the with rebates and even tesla sales sometimes you could pick them up for under forty thousand canadian dollars in quebec and if this car here was selling for let's say 32,000 on the rental car sales yard. Well, I'm not too sure I would buy it at, at that point because 
you're buying a car that's already close to 100,000 kilometers, 60,000 miles, there's going to be some reconditioning involved, such as getting the paint fixed. They might recondition the paint, but it's not going to be up to a, to a good standard. It's going to be so that it looks good to sell the car. Then first few car washes, it looks bad again. Uh, the wheels have to be refinished. That's already probably $800 there. At that point, you might as well just buy a set of jobber wheels. You have things to worry about. Uh, what possible breakdowns might come along. You might be in for it for a set of whole new control arms shortly. So I think you really have to look at, at your pricing properly and compare it to what a new one would be to what a X rental car would be. If you're going to be keeping the car long term, I maybe suggest buying the new car for that peace of mind. And everyone likes to have a new car. It looks good. If you're keeping the car for three or four years and you're going to be driving it 50 or 60,000 kilometers a year and you cycle through cars quickly, well then maybe you can just buy an X rental car, save a bunch on the depreciation costs versus the new car and basically well just drive this one until it stops working or there's some major problem with it. So you don't eat um, all, that, all that depreciation cost. So for me, it would be a tough one. It would be a tough one. I could fix this car myself. I wouldn't be too worried about buying it. Would I buy this specific car? I think I would buy this car. If, if it was priced right, if I could buy it at wholesale price, at the right price, let's say around $25,000 to $27,000 for a uh, 2022 Model 3 rear-wheel drive LFP in this condition, I think I would buy it. Uh, it wouldn't be for resale. I'd buy it for my personal use. The wheels, I'd keep these for, for winter, uh, exactly what they're on now. I'd keep them for winter. I'd bring it to my detailer. He would do a fantastic job of cleaning it up. And I would drive the car and then deal with whatever else comes along down the line. As I said, the, the battery warranty here is eight years, 160,000 kilometers. So if there's a battery issue, Tesla will take care of it. They are quite good at their battery warranty. So I hope you enjoyed watching th this video. I hope that you do want to buy a used EV, whether it be from a private sale or from a rental car fleet, but it's one of those cases where you have to do your homework, you have to crunch the numbers and see what works for you. At the end of the day, this is your money you're spending and this is a car that you're going to be driving every day. So you want to be happy and you want to have peace of mind. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again. Hey, I just want to say when we did drop off the car on Friday night, uh, the same gentleman was there who checked us out, checked us back in and they basically got in the car and drove off of it back to the um, fleet service yard where it was going to be cleaned up and listed for sale. And it's actually funny because they asked me how I enjoy renting the uh, Teslas. And I said, well, I actually rent from Hertz exclusively because of the uh, Tesla fleet. So I just want to put it out there that um, they did take the car out of the fleet when we brought it back. And actually, as we were leaving the airport, it was in front of us driving back to the fleet services lot and I actually pointed it out to my wife saying hey that's the car that we just had so I just wanted to add, to add that in the video quickly.